back to Lessons Learned. I'm Sherry and this is part two of the pattern organization video. Uh, one week ago we saw part one of this series and this will be part two and the final part of how I managed to organize, declutter, um, make better use of the patterns that I have. There are so many quilt patterns to be had out there and magazines and books but this uh, series is specifically on patterns although I did deal with some books as well as you remember formerly I had in this cube uh, a, a mess of patterns and books and then I had other books in other places that I discovered later so I was able to uh, transfer all of the pattern material from the the cube into other other ways to keep the patterns and then combine the books that I have to uh, put, well nicely fill this cube I could probably only afford to buy maybe one more book so one more book and then after that if I buy a new book one has to go and I think I can do that and I you say well why are you limiting yourself why can't you just have all the books you want to have and keep what you have there's always good information in there that's true uh, I could do that but I'm trying to live within my space that I have for my my sewing room and my activities that I do here in this space. And this is a, I believe, a 12, 12 or 13 by 16 uh, building here. It's like a shed. So um, it's been converted into my sewing studio and I have to live within uh, these four walls. I'm not don't don't have any plans anytime soon to break out any walls or spread into the attic or anything like that so i'm going to stay within my bounds and uh, if you have room in your space to continue to buy and collect books and patterns and fabric and whatever other things you love go for it you should if you got the room and it's not infringing upon your um, productivity, if it's not infringing upon others who live in your house or in your uh, regular living space, then by all means, buy all the fabric patterns, books, notions, furniture, whatever you want. Um, this is just what I'm choosing to do and every plan is not right for every person. Everybody has to find their own uh, comfort with uh, items that they keep. So uh, here's my book bin and this is what it's going to be. I do have two books that are too large to fit in here and they are more of a reference book uh, a block reference book so I have two of those and I'm going to keep those out separately and kind of displayed in the room so this will go back into the cube under the table uh, the shelf that I have for these cubes and uh, I'll always know that all of my books besides those two are there if I'm looking for one of my books so in part one we went through all of my patterns and patterns that I had um, printed off or maybe got sent to me in with some fabric or things that I had pulled out of magazines or off of online that I had printed. Uh, I organized all of those. You watched that and I managed to get all of those into these three binders. So those will go on the shelf with the two other books that don't fit in the cube. I'll show you that later. Now, as for the manuals and instruction sheets and things that I decided to laminate, I went to Staples and picked up this little um, magazine holder or document holder. It's kind of a wire mesh. You've seen these. Um, it has three slots. You can sit it on a shelf or on a table. You can also attach it to the wall. There's some screws included and some um, anchors and there's some spaces here um, 
that you can use to screw it into the wall and that's what I'm going to do and I'll show you that done here in a minute. So in this I have, uh, you notice last week I had my laminator out and I laminated some things that I wanted to keep. Uh, I found some more after that that I didn't film uh, like these feet. Uh, there's different feet that I have that I've bought uh, aside from my baby lock machine that came with some really nice instruction sheets. So I laminated those and I've stuck them in here as well as a few other reference cards that I wanted. I also have a heavy duty singer machine uh, that came with a, a quick setup guide or a quick start guide that I put into a, um, a sleeve and also the manual for it. That is in one space here. And then my other three machines, manuals, their main manuals, I have here. My Baby Lock, my Singer, and my um, Janome. So I have those here. And I also found the um, test strip that I made for all the different stitches that the Jazz 2 does. So I'm going to keep that here. And this will be mounted alongside my desk over here where my sewing machine is. So it will always be near where I'm using that machine. So I'll show you how that goes on the wall here in a minute. And then for the patterns that were in uh, pouches, in plastic pouches, I picked up two, um, I think these are called uh, literature, pal literature, um, I don't know the exact term, but it's like if you, you go somewhere and they have those plastic pouches on the wall that, that hold literature, they're like a, a hard acrylic plastic. So I got two sizes of those. I got one that was kind of an eight and a half by 11 size and one that is smaller. And I don't remember the size. I think it was six by nine or something like that. So this size pattern fits very nicely in here. I will admit, that I have, I am already almost to capacity on, on this. So I feel like I could actually let go of some of these patterns that I feel like I may never do. Now there was a last, uh, a last week, there was a pile of um, trash that I came up with. I did not throw any patterns away in that trash. It was just uh, papers, notes, um, receipts, things that I don't need anymore. So I did get rid of a little bit of trash out of all of this. So I have these patterns to go through. This also will sit on a shelf or a tabletop, but they also have a hanger. So I am, this one has one hole for a hanger. This one has two holes for a hanger back here, right here and here. And I'm going to hang these two on the wall as well in a little spot that I have right over here next to my cutting uh, board. My, um, oh, the thing I have hanging on the wall that holds all of my rulers uh, that I made. So I'm going to go ahead and um, mount these next to that. I've already kind of tested that out and I think it's going to be... Uh, a nice place a nice little narrow space that's not being used that this would go into perfectly so I can just put those on there and then my patterns are at my fingertips basically if I ever want to go looking for a new pattern or searching for a pattern that I'm currently using so that is what I have ended up with and now I will go to the areas where I'm going to put these away and show you that Here are the two books that I was speaking of that are reference books. Uh, it's Grandma's Best Full Size Quilt Blocks and Barbara Brackman's Encyclopedia of Pieced Quilt Patterns. And so in this holder right here, it's the perfect size for those three binders that I created.
All right, I hope that gave you some motivation to go through some of your paperwork and manuals and patterns and such and get organized in your sewing space. Um, not only motivation, but maybe some ideas you hadn't thought of before. So I'll put a link in the description box of uh, equivalents of these um, supplies that I used uh, from Amazon. I got most of the things I used from the local Staples store, but I'm sure I can find something very, very similar. And I'll put those in the description box. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Come back every Wednesday for a video on anything quilting sewing related that you can imagine. You just never know. All right, we'll see you soon. Bye.